Hi guys and welcome to another video on Simple Takeoffs. If you enjoyed this video and take something away from it, I hope you consider clicking that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell for a lot more. Today we're going to be going over how to program the multi-function control and display unit in the Airbus A320neo fly-by-wire. Go on over to your browser and type in Navigraph. You're going to want to make a free account here. Alright, once you're logged in, this is what you'll see. And at the top, you're going to want to go to Products and SimBrief. This is the tool that allows us to make a realistic flight plan. I'm going to want to go over to create new flight plan. And as you can see, I've already filled mine out from New Zealand to Brisbane, Wellington to Brisbane. And there's an incredible amount of detail in the flight plan. I encourage you to read their guide that explains uh, when you hover over all the information, it explains what each one of those lines mean. And also don't forget to check out the charts at the back of your flight plan as it has tons of useful information. And we're gonna go over to charts and download for whatever platform you wish. By the way, this is not necessarily mandatory, but since you took the time to download the fly-by-wire mod, you would want the full immersion experience and that's fully recommended. So once that's all set and you made a sim brief uh, flight plan, you can come over to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and select your departure point and that should be good enough to bring us to a cold and dark start with the aircraft. So here I am in Wellington, New Zealand. First thing I'm going to do is turn on the fly pad as they call it. And while that's loading up, we can Go ahead and click at the top left button there and import the flight plan we just made from SimBrief and it all shows up here and as a tip I usually look at the winds here and it allows me to have an idea of what runway I'm going to depart and land at. Then go down to Dispatch, Operational Flight Plan and voila! Your flight plan in SimBrief magically appears here on the fly pad just like it does in real life except not from SimBrief. And we're gonna go over to ground services and get some power over to the aircraft. And of course you can get all the other services as well. I'm gonna call over the fuel truck, baggage, and catering. To the overhead panel, we're going to get some power to the aircraft after we make sure the external power is connected. And this is important, you want to go over to Air Data, Inertial Reference System and turn all three to NAV. And that's going to take a while to load up so it's important to do that. In order for us to understand how to program the MCDU, we need to first memorize this acronym. The acronym is called DIFSRIP, Data, Initialization A, Flight Plan, Secondary Flight Plan, Radio Navigation, Initialization B, and Performance. We're not going to worry too much for today's video about data as it's mainly used in real life operations to ensure all the different sets of databases that they use for the flight are up to date and we're not going to worry about that here as well as secondary flight plan since Microsoft Flight Simulator has not yet programmed this. 
But all the other ones we're going to go through and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to set up the MCDU for a flight to whatever destination you wish. Alright, let's go on over here to our MCDU menu and click Air Traffic Services Unit and Airline Operational Control. And we can go over here to Weight and Balance and request boarding of our passengers. And it's fully integrated with our SIM brief. I'm going to click Start. And as you can see, we have 174 passengers expected on this flight and they're making their way over. Make sure the jetway is connected, otherwise they'll fall. And when the passengers started to make their way over to the aircraft, I'm going to go over here and fuel up. So we're going to go over to the fuel section and check how much block fuel we need, which is the total amount of fuel. Uh, from our operational flight plan. Now make sure the units are dealt with appropriately. So in my case, because I'm doing a flight from New Zealand to Australia, I used kilograms, which meant I had to convert because my flight pad is inputting the fuel number in pounds. So make sure you get that right. Otherwise you're gonna run into a doozy. And the fuel window should open up otherwise you can open it yourself and you can see the payload and the fuel changing as we're being fueled up and the passengers are still arriving all right now we're going to go over here to initialization a and we can either fill it in manually one by one or request it again from our sim brief inter integration which is now becoming apparent why it's so important to do that first enters our cost index from our flight plan, our destination, our alternate route, the winds, the tropopause elevation, everything. And that's uh, initialization A. Now the next step is flight plan and again all the waypoints are entered through SimBrief. Make sure you check for any discontinuities and you remove them. And the easiest way to describe discontinuities is either a gap in your flight plan or what I call a knot, which is basically going past the waypoint to another, then coming back to that waypoint unintentionally, thereby causing a knot in your route. And you need to step through all the waypoints in your flight plan, as I'm doing here using the arrow, while selecting the uh, plan on the top left of your MCD your more sorry MCP your mode control panel rather and setting a right range so right now I have it on range 20 nautical mile and it allows me to step through and just make sure the whole trip is linear from start to end meaning it's all it all makes sense there are no gaps there are no knots In my case, I cleared that discontinuity there because I didn't, there was no issue. One thing to note is I have already entered my arrival, but you can do it by selecting your destination airport. Going over to arrivals, you can set your standard terminal arrival route, which I won't get into in this video, or and you can also enter your approach. So in this case, I'm doing black four x-ray with the ILS to 19 left. Just go through your entire flight plan and make sure everything makes sense to you and you're happy with it. And similarly to how I selected the arrival, we can go to our departure airport and select a standard instrument departure, which in this case I have not. And there's tons of other videos for learning about these things. 
Now in terms of secondary flight plan, as I mentioned, it's all grayed out because it's not programmed, so we're going to skip it and go right over to radio navigation. This is where we'll enter all the frequencies. In my case, I have the ILS for 19 left already programmed in there. And I should be able to enter a three digit course which in my case is course 196 to runway 19 left, but for whatever reason, this is asking for four digits and I'm not sure if this is a bug or if I'm doing something wrong. So if, if you guys know, let me know in the comments. And now we're able to go to init and click the right arrow to go to init B. And only do this after the passengers have all been loaded into the aircraft since the weight will be dynamic otherwise and uh, we can plug in all our zero fuel weight zero fuel weight center of gravity and it calculates a block fuel of 19.3 which is less than what we need in our flight plan because sim brief takes into account a whole bunch of other things like etop scenarios and additional contingencies that the microsoft flight simulator does not and once the init b page is completed I like to come to my fuel prediction page just to make sure everything makes sense and we can also reference our weights that the aircraft calculates such as takeoff weight, landing weight, zero fuel weight against the operational flight plan estimated by SimBrief and it should pretty much match more or less. And we're finally at our last page in the MCDU setup, which is performance. We can go ahead and plug in the flap setting we choose to use. So in this case, I'm gonna go flaps one at takeoff and our trimmable horizontal stabilizer. Most airlines have a performance toolkit to calculate this, but in our case, we're gonna leave it zero by putting up 0.0. .0. And for our Flex 2 temperature, I'm seeing it's 15 degrees outside, but to preserve the engine, we're gonna go ahead and lie to the computer and say it's 25 degrees outside, so it reduces thrust. And we're ready to plug in, finally, our V speeds here, V1, rotation speed, and V2. If you go ahead and click the left top three line select keys, you can go ahead and have those calculated for you. And then I'm gonna go over to my primary flight display to make sure my V1 and V2 numbers are plugged in and correct, which they are. That's great. And there you go, guys. Your MCDU is now set up and you are ready to go. Just make sure you get an ATC clearance if you're on VATSIM. And for more details, check the Fly-By-Wire website. And don't forget to subscribe for a lot more videos like this.